So this, this little girl comes to her mother and says, Mom, where do we come from? And the mother says, well, we came from God. But then God created Adam and Eve, so we came from Adam and Eve. And she, being smart, goes to her father and says, Dad, where do we come from? And he says, well, there was a big bang. And then the monkeys came. And then we came. So we came from the monkeys. So she's confused. She goes back to her mother and says, Mom, you told me we come from God. Or my father tells me we come from the monkeys. And the mother says, well, child, it's actually very simple. I told you about where my family came from. He told you where his came from. Where did your family come from? My came from God. Did your come from God? Amen. One of my healthy fears that I think God has given me and given to every person but not everybody utilizes is the fear of heights uh, and that fear probably came when I was in a silver wood at the panic plunge <laughs> and uh, they told me it would be fun <laughs> and those of you who don't know panic pl plunge is you just thank God for your life and I remember I sat in there locked myself in and it goes really slowly 140 feet high and then there comes that click yeah that click and it drops you you know it, it's not fast it's just 47 miles per hour but those 47 miles it feels like you're gonna lose your soul and you scream and you yell and you and you come out of that and I remember after that day that's when I said from this day on no one will ever manipulate me lie to me push me make me belittle me but I'm not ever going on these kind of crazy things and uh, but I have one of my guys here who uh, who's not like me and his spirit of fear has not occupied his life in a healthy way and he was single and uh, uh, not a little bit in a crazy edge at that time of his life and uh, so he decided going skydiving and actually I borrowed his video so I'm going to show you a little video it's just, just a few seconds when uh, kick, just meet the video meet, kick, kill the audio and so this is Martin over there with another gentleman hanging on the top of him and you have to pay actually to do this and so supposedly he's having fun his father didn't know he was doing this yeah because this is completely a waste of time and also you can ruin your life by doing this you can lose your life and so but they said that this is fun it's interesting I want you to see the few things that are happening here is one in order to skydive he had to have a guy on the top of him that's one of the reasons why I'm not going skydiving no guys on the top of me but the second the second secret to skydiving is that you do have to have a little balloon over there they call it parachute otherwise you will have the thrill of your life which will last 45 seconds and will end you in a casket and fortunately for Martin he did have the guy on the top and he also had a parachute and because of that he landed safely and he is still here with us his legs work his voice wasn't really working today but his legs still work and not only he survived but he actually got married after that and um, and everything worked out really well so for those of you who are trying to get married try skydiving <laughs> It can improve your chances. When God designed relationships, He designed them with a thrill inside of them. God designed marriage, God designed physical bodies and God created us to be sexual beings. God created us and He put thrill within our life when He designed us. To have the idea that God designed us to be people who are bored and people who are not enjoying our life would not be consistent with the scriptures. But with God's design, as God who designed us to be the people who have this thrill in our relationships and have this, you know, crush or this warmth feeling that goes in when you fall in love and when you you know have these adventurous things in life God designed these things to happen to us 
but they can happen to us just like skydiving you can have a thrill skydiving but you can also have a thrill that ends in the funeral or you can have a thrill that ends with a video all depends on will you go into that airplane with another guy and with a parachute and if you go into the airplane into skydiving without another guy and without a parachute you'll still have a thrill a lot of it <laughs> oh no don't ever tell people if you don't have a parachute you won't have an exciting dive they will have an exciting dive oh they will it's like people who say if you don't have God in your life you will not have you know there, there will not be a certain fun in life of course there will be certain fun in life there is certain fun in alcohol there's certain fun in drugs there's certain fun in nightclubs even though it lasts little but it's still there there is a lot of fun in diving without a parachute the problem with that fun is that it shortly quickly gets out of shadowed by the fact that when the fun comes to an end and it always does come to an end you have to land on your feet and you can't when God designed relationships he designed them in such a way where your thrill ends without a casket without a funeral where the thrill doesn't destroy the drill of your life where the thrill of relationship where the thrill of that excitement doesn't destroy anything else Satan on the other hand he knows our desire for the thrill he knows our desire for the excitement he knows our desire for infatuation for love he knows that it's God's given and what he offers to us is he offers to us the thrill he offers to us the excitement he offers to us the infatuation all of it and he says if you go with me you will have that but the only way you can have that is if you throw away the parachute and get rid of the instructor because the instructor will limit your fun and the parachute will slow down your fun get rid of the parachute get rid of the instructor and dive in and you will have an awesome time he offers the thrill every single day even right now as we're sitting 30,000 people are viewing pornography three thousand dollars is being spent every single second on viewing pornography the average age for a person to be exposed to pornography is no longer 14 the now is 11. the day where pornography is viewed the most in the united states is sunday and the least it's on Thanksgiving this week state of Utah declared a health emergency because the state of Utah the residents of that state view pornography more than any other state in the United States and today it's been, this week it's been declared as a health crisis because Satan offers a thrill without a parachute and without an instructor and he makes it seems like the less of parachute you have and by getting rid of the instructor you are going to have greater and more amazing excitement and thrill a, a, a long this guy is already dead Paul uh, Paul Havry uh, or Havry uh, he was a radio personality a really famous radio uh, talk guy and he was sharing once about this guys how uh, Eskimos how they killed wolves and he shared a very interesting story about how they would not attack wolves directly but take a knife with a very sharp blade and cover it with a layer of blood and they would cover it with a layer of blood let the blood dry up then cover that layer again and cover that layer again cover it for about three to five times and they would go into the woods and stick that knife into the ground and abandon that knife and because a wolf you know has a craving inside and it, and it tastes blood from afar a wo wolf has this craving for a thrill for that excitement for that for that it speaks excitement to him so he quickly goes in and he comes close to that knife and he begins to lick that knife and he begins to lick that knife more and more and the thrill kicks in 
and the excitement kicks in until licking that he's not recognizing that he's beginning to lick a warm blood and it's his own blood because the knife that was in the ground is already in his own mouth and the wolf dies and that's exactly what the enemy uses we have a natural desire for relationships we also have a natural desire for sex God made us into physical beings if God did not create that natural desire he would have put wings on you and he would have removed certain body parts but he placed those parts in you and didn't give you wings which means that you are a human you're not an angel and you should stop being an angel but with that said you must also understand you are not an animal an animal lives by their urges an animal doesn't have self-control I mean I know you've been telling your cat to do that but no self-control in their kingdom whatsoever no self-control in the dog's kingdom because they are animals they don't have spirits you and I do and so we must understand that God created us with this natural desire and what the enemy does is he wants to give us something that looks like that and lie to us and tell us that the only really way to live the most thrilling life is to throw away all of God's restraints throw away God out and go and satisfy yourself and listen you will be satisfied you will have the thrill but with the funeral but with the consequences that will make the thrill be the most regrettable thing about your life at that time it will seem like the most exciting thing but without God and without his word the most exciting things becomes the most regrettable things that eventually people testify here and say I thank God he rescued me from that sex is not the problem lust is you know what lust is lust is the athlete's foot it when it itches and you scratch it to relieve the itching and it itches more you scratch it hoping it will go away but it only intensifies and that's what the devil's plan is and today we are here and the devil doesn't want me to talk about what I'm going to talk about because uh, we're going to slap him left and right and I know some breakups might happen after this service I know some uh, brothers will be left and abandoned and I know some sisters will have to lean on Jesus perhaps that's not my intent at all to cause breakups or I just want people to get married that's but I want people to stay happily married but for that to happen we must also deal with this issue we must today settle it in our relationships and before even we get into our relationships of God's way of doing things and the God's way is not to steal your thrill the guy who was jumping with Martin his goal wasn't to choke Martin his goal wasn't to, you didn't see a sour face on him. You didn't see this grin. You know, I am mad because Martin is jumping. You didn't see that. You, see, you saw excitement. The guy was ecstatic. The guy was pumped. Actually, he was the one recording everything so that Martin can replay it and so that I can talk about it. He was not there to limit his thrill. He was there to make, make sure he has the most thrill. And when the thrill is over, and it always gets over, that he can help him get on his feet. See, God, God's goal is not just to help you fall in love. God wants to help you live in love. You can fall in love with anybody. And nowadays anything. But live in love, my friend, that is a completely different story but to walk in love that is a completely different story and you need more than Hollywood and Batch Bachelor series you need Jesus Christ you need the God's Word you need God's power and God's Spirit you need a lot of deliverance a lot of community groups a lot of home groups and a lot of Jesus can somebody say amen and so I want to look at one guy today who decided to jump from the plane unfortunately he didn't have an instructor and didn't have a parachute it's in the Bible and this is 2nd Samuel chapter 13 I'm not gonna read that whole chapter um, it's this guy named Amnon I'm gonna call him adrenaline junkie Amnon adrenaline junkie Amnon let me give you just a little bit of the background about Amnon Amnon he was the son of King David 
everyone knows David. David is like George Washington of Israel. He's the you know Thomas Jefferson. He, he's the big guy of Israel. Everybody knows him. He's the best king and David has a kid. He has actually quite few kids but the first kid that he had his name was Amnon. Now David at this time is 53 years of age. Amnon at this time when we read about him he is 22 years of age and the Bible tells us about this Amnon it doesn't even tell us what his ambitions and his goals are because we know what his ambitions are he is the king's king's kid you know what that means in those days it simply means he's the next king because the king is not a president that he has to go you know get campaigns and get everybody to vote for him his party to vote for him in those days you're a king you got a son and your son whether he likes politics or not he becomes next king whether he has a gpa at all if he went to school whatever he does it doesn't matter he could be he could be mental and stable he's going to be a king and so this guy is already a king he doesn't even have to do anything to be a king everything is ready for him he just needs to wait a few more years his dad is going to retire he will take the kingdom he's the guy every dude in Israel wished to be like he's the guy every girl in Israel wished to be married to even if that would mean sharing him with 40 other women because as a king you owned everything you didn't get some a hundred or three hundred thousand dollar salary like a president. Your salary was everyone, anybody, what anybody had, that's yours. Taxes, that was your money. I mean this guy is loaded. He has everything going for him. His daddy was the man of God. His daddy searched for God. He wasn't perfect but he was after God. And Amnon, the Bible tells us about him. It starts like this. It says that Amnon was in love doesn't tell us nothing about him just the fact that introduces him at two, 22 years of age that he falls in love and there's a problem with this love story one is that he falls in love with Tamar let me tell you about Tamar Tamar is 15 and Tamar is his half-sister so little complications that's where it's complicated came from very complicated 22 years old and a 15 year old girl and the Bible says he falls in love with her and the scripture says and it was improper means it was not right for him to have her but a guy is gonna be a king a king gotta used to do what he needs to do and wants to do and instead of obeying God's commandments instead of asking advice from God instead of going into his devotional time instead of going before God and say Lord God these feelings are there but I know your word says otherwise can you give me some patience and love instead of going to some mentors Amnon he has a friend and he asks his friend what who sh what he should do and his friend gives him an advice a very terrible advice Amnon follows that advice and next thing that happens is this story ends tragic I have just two points from this story that I want to leave with you. One is don't let the thrill substitute your parachute. Don't let the thrill substitute your parachute. I've mentioned it before the enemy will always say that a parachute will kill your thrill if you follow God's commandments you will miss on the fun if you live your life according to God's rules you will miss on the excitement therefore jump out without the parachute and hope to have the most fun you can and when you're getting to the bottom call God to be there to pick you up because you don't want to of course have a funeral and that's what the enemy lies to us and that's exactly what this Amnon believed he falls in love and he becomes sick and with feelings the Bible says he starts losing weight he becomes physically sick actually because he's so in love and instead of going to God's word he begins to see his feelings as an indication that this is right and does that which his feelings tell him even though it's contrary against the word of God and eventually he ends up making a mistake that he regrets 
as Christians we must understand our standard is not our feelings our standard is the Word of God as Christians we must understand is the measuring line for us is not our infatuation just because it feels right it doesn't make it right just because it feels so good it doesn't make it so good were you in love at the age of 14 man it felt right you knew you're gonna get married to the person whose name you don't remember now but how many sleeps you missed you lost your appetite you were losing weight or some of you were gaining weight at that time because you were so excited and there was not one thought in your mind this could ever go wrong this person is perfect two weeks later you found someone else so by now being 20 24 you can come to one conclusion your feelings are not consistent they are so unreliable when a married man begins to throw an eye to another woman that is his friend because his marriage is struggling and those feelings become so real and they so they're so strong my friend just because it's real it doesn't make it right and just because it feels good today it does not mean it's good for you and that's a simple truth you have to embrace today because the devil replaces your emotions with God's word God's word holds the heaven and the earth your emotions cannot even hold one hour without switching you have a bad day go drink coffee emotions changed you have a bad day somebody gives you fifty dollars your emotions go through the roof your emotions cannot hold anything they're like this up and down and when you begin to put your life on them instead of the word of God push the parachute out and say no I'm gonna go for the thrill I don't need the parachute I don't need God's word to tell me who I should be with it's my life I can do it on my own my feelings my heart will lead me well it led you last time and it wasn't really good today we live in a generation where love is God supreme court has supreme court has defined if you're in love it's right today in California people are going to court who want to marry their animals it's there are those and studies have been done already proving that there is such a thing as a healthy thing when a man an old man has an attraction for a little child universities have done studies already proven to be right and you will see why is it wrong for them to love if it's not wrong for you to love the problem we have in our generation is we made love the standard God is our standard as Christians love is very important love is very valuable but my friend if I will begin to do everything that I loved I wouldn't be here today because I also like Krispy Kreme donuts <laughs> my stomach admires them and I get a crush every time I look at them and yes my I get this feeling this rush and this excitement but the problem is there is these doctors and there is these scientists who keep telling me that I shouldn't have it because it will destroy my life and so what I should do is just silence all of them and go and eat if I could I would eat Krispy Kreme for the morning for lunch and for dinner why do I not, not, not do that not because I do not want that it's because I do not allow my wants to determine what's healthy for me and I look at that broccoli and I know that that thing was made somewhere close to Hades but the doctors say that is what's healthy for you so therefore my feelings have to take a back seat and broccoli has to end up in my plate that's how it is with relationships you cannot let your feelings bake take the decision for you you can throw the parachute out and simply live with this notion that listen if it feels right it must be right that's not how it is can somebody say amen? amen yes you will have the thrill but it will ruin the drill of your life 
it will end everything else in your life and that's not what God wants for us now you may say well it's a hundred percent right Vlad we you know we shouldn't be marrying those of you know maybe same sex we shouldn't definitely never be marrying animals we shouldn't never be doing these things but let's leave that out for us what about those that when the word of God makes it clear for us that you shouldn't be in a relationship with someone who doesn't share your values and your belief system but what do we do but we're in love but he's Republican but he said he'll change but I'm gonna flirt to convert it will work but I can really change him and then what we do is we make all of these excuses and we drop the parachute out and we're running for the thrill and we're not even thinking about the future because when you're in love why do you need to think let your heart lead and then that that thrill ends really quickly and next thing that happens is the heart is broken and next thing that happens is there's a lot of rejection and next thing that happens is we are looking and the next thing that happens is the thrill lasted so short but the pain lasts so long until now it's been years and somebody reminds you or something and the pain is still there my friend I really want to challenge each one of you God is not out to get you fun get that out of your head the devil is a liar God is out to, for you to have fun that he doesn't have to do a surgery on you afterwards. God wants you to have a fun without a casket. God wants you to have a fun when the thrill is over. You run into the drill of your life, into the routine of your life, into your business, into your health, into your home group. That you run into the, your career, you run into your school, you run into having a house, into having a nice vehicle, into having things in your life and you don't have to walk on crutches but you keep on living your life continues for the glory of God and for that to happen you have to let God's word and God's standards to determine who you date, when you date and how you date. Who you date, when you date and how you date. You may say but that's too much control. Well go skydiving without a parachute and have freedom and when a guy tells you put on a parachute he said too much control. I just like too tight, too tight. I just do not like tightness. I do not like that at pressure. Too much pressure. Everybody telling me what to do and, and this is going to hold on to me all the time. No, I want to break from this at least once. He will say you can have a break from this once but it's that once that could be in the place, you could be in the place you do not want to be in. My friend, God's word is not out to take anything from you. But your headache, but your pain, but your depression, your disappointment, your heartbreak, unwanted pregnancies, sexual transmitted diseases, a divorce, disappointment, death and lake of eternity in lake of fire. That's what God's word is there for. He wants to take the bad and give you the good that will last. Can somebody say amen? Number two. Take your instructor with you instead of trusting him to catch you. Take your instructor with you on the journey instead of trusting him to catch you. Amnon decides that his love is the standard, not what God has to say. And so he jumps into that relationship. And instead of asking God, he had no relationship with God. You don't see reference to God. You don't see praying. You don't see invoking a priest. You don't see any kind of seeking counsel and advice from the Lord. You see him just simply taking advice from his friend and jumping quickly into a relationship without God. And that's exactly what many times we do. Not only we ignore God's word when we go into relationships and we suffer calamity. But the second thing that a lot of young people and even people who are married that we do the mistake is that when we do not involve God in our relationship. When we have God in the universe, we have God in church, we have God in our Wednesday service, that we have God in our Sunday service, we have God in our home group, we have God everywhere it seems but not in our relationship. We don't talk to him about our relationship, we don't involve him in our relationship and our relationship doesn't revolve around him. God is a spare tire. We don't let, let religion get in between us, I heard people say. Well that is a completely awesome thing. You can go do it by yourself but at the same time sooner or later you must understand life is not that long and you're not and I are not that brilliant. We need an instructor and his name is God and he wants to help us not choke us and he wants to be our advisor in life. When we don't have God in our relationships three things will happen. Is you will expect the other person to be God. 
you will always make the other person to be that which is God. You will expect them to be perfect. Oh and they will be perfect first few months. And then you find out the breath stings and when they wake up without makeup you didn't recognize the same person that you met on the day. You recognize they have flaws. They're not perfect and then your infatuation it begins to go down because you didn't fall in love with the date you fell in love with God. You thought they were God and they're not. It's like that uh, you know lady said you know I was his I was his goddess and, and they said what happened now? He said well he became atheist. <laughs> when you fall in love with the goddess my friend you will quickly become an atheist because she is not God. He is not God but when you don't have a God you need to find one because you were created by a God to have a God. You will quickly begin to make something into a God who cannot be God. You will quickly find out that your date is going to try to become your doctor. Your relationship will become a rehab. And marriage will become the magic pill that will fix all the problems. It will make the loneliness go away. It will make the lust go away. It will make all of this pain and suffering I've experienced as a child. It will heal all of that because now I am married and now I am in love. No one can fix all of your problems. If they could, God will send His Son to die on the cross. He will send marriage to die on the cross for you. He didn't. Marriage cannot fix anything that Jesus doesn't fix first. If you don't have a relationship with God, your relationships that you're going to go into, you will expect it to be your rehab. You will try to suck literally things that only Jesus Christ can give you. They are not the Messiah. You say, well, his name is, his name is Jesus. His last name is not Christ. His name is Juan, not Jesus. His name is not Jesus and he doesn't have nails. Yes, he may have scars and tattoos but not nails went through his hands and through his feet. And that's only one person and if you make him your God, you have the privilege and the honor of going into a relationship, looking at the person, knowing they're not perfect, knowing they will never love you always and perfectly because somebody else already does that and they don't have to do that. But they can be there for you and they can love you and you can grow in that relationship. Can somebody say amen? If we don't have God in our relationship, the second thing that happens is that not only you make someone into a God, you begin to act like God. It means you begin to develop a Messiah complex. You begin to look into people like projects. You begin to say to things, things like, you know what, I can fix them. I can change them. They, they haven't met me yet. And once they do, you'll see. I'll provide for them. I'll cherish them. I'll pick them up. I've seen so many people do that thing. I will change him. He, oh, he's cheating. He hasn't met me yet. <laughs> Trust me, honey. His cheating is, has nothing to do with women. It has to do with his character. And you are, that's just going to continue. Oh, he's abusive. Oh, he, he's going to change once he meets me. And you develop this Messiah complex because you don't have a Messiah. So you have to pretend to be one. Every Messiah died on a cross. You will die too. The only difference, the real Messiah came back. And you won't. You are not the Messiah. Stop being somebody's Messiah. Stop being somebody's cure and salvation. And you can only do that if you have a Savior and you come to your own realization. You can't even change you. Nevertheless someone else. I need God to change this man. I cannot change my wife. I can't even change myself. But there is one who can change me and that's the Holy Spirit. And when I get to know the Holy Spirit more, I recognize I'm a wretchless man that only God can change. Even my efforts cannot change me. Only God's blood and the Holy Spirit. And when I experience that, the last thing I want to do is change someone else. If I fail doing it for me, I'll fail doing it for you. The same that changes me is the same one that can change you. And if you don't want to acknowledge him, listen honey, we can work on this relationship but we're not getting romantic. Why? Because I'm not your Messiah. Can somebody say amen? amen? The third thing that happens when we don't have God in our relationship is Satan always offers us idiots who gives us advice that ruins our life. You know what? When Amnon didn't have God, Satan had a friend and this friend came to Amnon and you know what this friend told him? He says lie to your daddy. Tell your daddy you're sick. Tell your daddy you got fever. Tell your daddy you want those pancakes that Tamar makes. Tamar doesn't even cook but she can YouTube it. 
tell your daddy that tomorrow needs to come and cook those pancakes okay okay I'm gonna do that and then he says when she comes I want you to kick everybody out I want you to find isolation because isolation leads to temptation always get alone when you always get alone and then you find yourself in trouble and he says I want you to get yourself in isolation and after that I want you to just do like in the movies you know you saw in the movies you know we're like clothes flying out and just like all this passion you know passion bro it's about passion and what if she doesn't like it no the, when the girl says no it means yes and that's exactly what this idiot straight from the pit of hell poisons this guy's mind and this guy has no God or relationship with him to check this through and he's like blind sheep led to the slaughter does everything this idiot tells him to do and you know what happens he rapes her because she said no amen yes according to the advice of a friend and when she tells him hey so when now you got me let's get married she, he says no and the bible says he started to hate her with more hate than the love that he had for her he got what he wanted now he didn't want what he got that's the all, always the story of people who fly without parachutes and instructors you get what you want and you recognize you hate what you got two years later Amnon gets slaughtered he gets murdered by Absalom who is the brother of Tamar and guess who's standing by David when the news comes that Amnon is killed and this friend the same friend stands by David says David don't worry it's just one kid that died Amnon oh you know why he died this was predetermined already actually the moment he did that thing this was already planned so th this was actually part of the, the plan he acts like this was a coffee drink that Amnon took when he got murdered this friend was sent from the devil himself to destroy his life and that's exactly what happens to people who don't have a relationship with God so close that God is attached to you and you just don't don't fly with God when you're going through trouble you fly with God when you go through thrill when you go through excitement when things are powerful when you got the promotion you got the job somebody blessed you with the car you know you finally in that time right now where you finish school and you're ready for a relationship and you got those you know that, that little spark flying and that time you're closer to God he's right there he's almost like chained to you cheering you on encouraging you you're not leaving him for a second because you do not want devil to sneak an idiot in your life and listen this is how bad friends influence us not by their advice by their, by their influence. Word influence has three letters in it which is very deadly. It's called flu. Influence. A flu doesn't necessarily work. Now you can get a flu by going you know getting a shot but most of us do not get a flu like that. Most of us get a flu by hanging out with somebody who has a flu. When somebody walks with the flu they don't come into you and say hey I have a flu be careful. No, even today when people came in I said, hey, how you doing? They said, are you feeling better? And I know what they're meaning. You know, <laughs> if I still have sickness so that they can stay away from me. Completely acceptable. And I asked them too and I said, are you feeling better? Do you have a fever? No, no, I don't have a flu. Nobody comes and tells you, hey, my name is Vlad, I have a fever. <laughs> no. People come in and you see them coughing, you see them, you see them a little bit pale, you see, you see them not looking all right and what you must understand at that moment is when somebody has a flu they don't advertise it but they spread it and because of flu it just spreads by coming in contact. That's exactly how bad friends spread the devil, the devil's kingdom in your life. By being there they begin to influence your life in drinking influence your life in smoking, influence your life into sexual immorality. It just kind of comes on you because you have no one connected to you to fight that off. Relationship with God, it's a life or death issue in the generation we live in today. Satan has traps set up everywhere now. He will give you thrill. It will be a thrill but it will end up in the ruin or he will set up some kind of a friend he will use your feelings as a standard to deceive you and to lie to you. My friend, if you think devil is interested in your well-being, you've been lied to. Devil is not interested in your being whatsoever. Jesus Christ died to prove that he is interested in you. He cares for you. He created you and he loves you. Can somebody say amen?